Today we're going to talk about the airbag system installed on the Volkswagen Cabriolet. As of 1990 model year, all Cabriolets come equipped with a driver's side airbag. Now this airbag system is a supplemental restraint system. By that, I mean that it works together with the three-point belt to restrain the driver in the event of a severe frontal collision. Now this system also makes it possible for the cabriolet to meet the 1990 passive restraint requirements. Now what we're going to look at today is the system's components. We'll look at what parts make up the system, where they're located, and how they work. We'll look at system testing. To test and diagnose the system, the new diagnostic tester VAG1551 is used. And no other test equipment can be used on this system. And finally, we'll look at service procedures. Cabriolets equipped with an airbag have some new procedures that must be followed. And we'll explain those here today. The airbag is located in this specially designed steering wheel. It's folded up in this housing it's covered with a vinyl pad. The vinyl pad is designed to tear open in the middle as the airbag inflates. Now the airbag will inflate in about 30 milliseconds, less than the blink of an eye. It will then serve to cushion the driver and absorb and dissipate the energy of the driver's forward movement. The airbag consists of a nylon bag with a rubber coating inside it. It also has four discharge holes at the back of it to allow the bag to deflate. Now, the airbag is folded up within this aluminum housing and inflated by this gas generator which is bolted to the back of the housing. The gas generator is filled with a solid propellant that when ignited will generate a very large volume of harmless nitrogen gas very quickly to inflate the bag. Now this complete airbag unit is bolted to the steering wheel here with these two Torx head screws that are located at the back of the steering wheel. The bolts are coated with a thread locking compound. Both bolts should be replaced whenever the airbag unit is removed. The airbag system is controlled by this electronic control unit here. This control unit contains a voltage transformer which will ignite the airbag. It also contains an energy reserve which retains enough power to operate the system even if the battery is disconnected during a collision. The control unit also has a safety sensor. Now, this prevents the airbag from being deployed during normal driving situations such as hitting severe potholes or bumps. Now the sensor closes at about two to two and a half G's of forward deceleration. The system then becomes armed. The control unit also has a permanent memory. This memory constantly monitors the system and will retain its memory even if the battery is disconnected. The control unit is located under the center console. It is fastened in place with shear nuts. The hex head on these shear nuts will twist off when the correct torque is reached. This reduces the possibility of the control unit being tampered with by untrained personnel. It also assures that the correct tightening torque is reached. If the control unit needs to be removed, the remaining portion of the nut can be threaded off using this special tool, socket number 9259. The control unit comes together with the system's main wiring harness. Now the wiring harness cannot be removed from the control unit. If a problem occurs in either component, both of them must be replaced together. Two deceleration sensors are used. They are located in the left and right side of the plenum. The sensors are connected to the airbag control unit and will react to forward deceleration 
such as those experienced in a severe frontal collision. Each sensor consists of a roller with a spring band mounted around it. Now, when forward deceleration forces exceed about 8 to 11 Gs, this roller will move forward and close an electrical contact. Now, only one of these sensors, together with the safety sensor, needs to close to activate the airbag. The sensors are fastened in place with the same shear nuts used to install the control unit. The sensors must be installed with the arrow pointing in the forward direction. The last component of the system that we should look at is this spiral spring assembly. This is what makes the electrical connection to the airbag. It is mounted on top of the steering column, attached directly to the stock switches, and it makes the electrical connection from the control unit to the gas generator. It contains two spiral springs that wind and unwind as the steering wheel is turned. Now this spiral spring assembly can turn about four turns from the center position in either direction. Now because of this, we must make sure that the front wheels are in the straight ahead position if we ever have to remove this spiral spring assembly. We also need to take a look at the indicator lights. The airbag system has two indicator lights located in the instrument cluster. The airbag control light will come on when the car is first started. The light will stay on for about five to eight seconds and should go out after the control unit has performed an electronic check of the system. If either indicator light stays on, there is a problem in the system and it must be tested with the VAG 1551. If either of the indicator lights stay on, the system must be tested using the VAG 1551 diagnostic tester. Now this is the only tester that can be used on the airbag system. The tester is used to read the system's fault memory, erase the fault memory, and turn out the warning light. Two connectors are located under the shift boot. This is where we connect the VAG 1551 tester to the airbag system. Before connecting the tester, make sure the car has been started and the engine has been run so that all possible faults are stored in the permanent memory. Then shut the ignition off and connect the tester. Connect the black connector from the tester to the black connector in the center console. Then connect the white connector from the tester to the red connector in the center console. We won't need to use the blue connector from the tester. With the ignition turned back on, we can now push button 1 to select the rapid data transfer mode. The VAG 1551 will only test the Cabriolet airbag system when it is in the rapid data mode. Now with rapid data selected, we can now enter a number for an address word. If you don't remember what the correct number is, by pressing the help button, the VAG 1551 will print out the list of complete address words. For the Cabriolet airbag, the correct number for this address is 57. So we'll push 5, 7, and we can enter it with the Q button. The next thing that should appear is the serial number for the airbag control unit. To continue the program, we push the arrow button, and now we can select a function. To read the fault memory, we'll want to select function 0, 2, and again, enter it by pressing the Q button. The contents of the fault memory will now be displayed by pushing the arrow button. Each fault can be displayed by continuing to push the arrow button until the select function XX display is shown. 
Now, if you would like the contents of the fault memory printed, simply push the print button and repeat the procedure, and the contents of the memory will now be printed out. Once any faults that have been found are repaired, you should then erase the fault memory. This is the only way that you can turn out the warning light. Now, to erase the fault memory, we'll want to select function 0, 5, enter it with the Q button, and the fault memory will then be erased. The system warning light in the instrument cluster will then go out. Before working on cabriolets equipped with a driver's side airbag, there are a few precautions that you must follow. Before working on any components of the system or removing the steering wheel, you must disconnect the battery ground strap and wait 20 minutes. This 20 minutes is to allow the energy reserves capacitor in the control unit to discharge. It's merely a precaution to prevent an accidental activation of the airbag. Next, before removing the steering wheel or the spiral spring, make sure that the front wheels are in the straight ahead position. Before removing the steering wheel, you'll have to remove the two Torx head screws at the back of the steering wheel to take the airbag unit out. Once both Torx head screws have been completely loosened, you can take the airbag unit and tilt it back. Now disconnect the red connector from the back of the gas generator and we can now store the airbag unit. I never store the airbag unit with the gas generator facing up. Always store the airbag unit with this vinyl pad facing up. Before you remove the steering wheel, it's a good idea to mark the position of the wheel in relation to its position of the steering column shaft. To do this, you can use a hammer and a punch. Now the steering wheel can be removed. While you're taking it off, be careful to guide the wire from the spiral spring through the opening in the steering wheel. Now the spiral spring stays attached to the top of the steering column stock switches. If the spiral spring is removed for any reason, there are a couple of things you want to check when you reinstall it. First, check to make sure that the wires from the spring assembly are routed correctly over the top of the steering column stock switches. Check carefully to make sure that they are not pinched. Next, we'll want to make sure that the spiral spring is in its center position. To do this, rotate the spring to its stop in either direction, and then rotate it back exactly four turns. Now once you've done that, you want to install the spring assembly on the steering column shaft. To help you there so you can line up the screws, you can peel back the rubber to make the screws more visible. Now the last thing that you want to check here when you're doing this is to make sure
that this white plastic guide is in the one o'clock position. Now this is to make sure that the wire to the airbag will line up with the hole in the middle of the steering wheel. Once you've gotten the wire fed through the hole in the steering wheel, you can install it on the steering column shaft. If for any reason an airbag unit must be disposed of, it must first be activated. An unactivated airbag unit could cause potential injury if activated unintentionally. Now to activate the airbag, it must be mounted in a steering wheel which is installed in the car. Now don't attempt to do this by mounting the airbag unit in any special fixtures or by laying it on the floor. Also, a special harness must be used to activate the airbag. This harness is 30 feet long. One end gets connected to the spiral spring. The other end is connected to a separate battery that is placed 30 feet away. The airbag can then be activated. The complete procedure can be found in the repair manual microfish. Now that covers all of the important points of the Cabriolet airbag system. Some important things to remember are the airbag control light will come on when the car is first started. The light will stay on for about five to eight seconds and should go out after the control unit has performed an electronic check of the system. If either indicator light stays on, there is a problem in the system and it must be tested with the VAG 1551. Make sure you disconnect the battery ground strap and wait 20 minutes before working on the system or removing the steering wheel. Never place the airbag unit with the vinyl cover facing down. Always store the airbag unit with this vinyl pad facing up. The front wheels must be in the straight ahead position before removing the steering wheel. If the spiral spring is removed, always make sure it is in its center position before reinstalling it. And also, check that the wires are routed correctly. The airbag system can only be tested using the VAG 1551. Testing must be done in the rapid data transfer mode. The airbag unit must be activated before it is disposed of or thrown away.